Missorts is a permanent public sound work that you can listen to on your mobile phone in the Redcliffe area of Bristol. It brings together 10 interconnected short stories written by 10 writers of all ages and the music of Jamie Telford. Once you've listened to a story, the music rushes in to fill the gap. J-Dog was loath to quit. That's what he used to say anyway, but the scream was heard by everyone. And he always did have a funny way of talking. You come here, he'd say, and you sit in the front row as noisy as can be, but you don't want to see your ugly selves. Suppose you think you're fighting for the downtrodden. For such a sort of historically rich area, it's quite sort of amnesiac in a way, isn't it? It's, it's very sort of forgetful of its past and it's very sort of present tense and, and um, you know, sort of contemporary. But I would never have guessed there were things like Quaker burial grounds or, you know, an old town wall running through it. And, you know, there's a sort of round, a sort of Jill Carriageway roundabout with a graveyard under it and stuff. I think because of the format, I was maybe expecting it to be some kind of audio guide that would sort of clarify that place for me a bit, where it seemed to be very subversive of that expectation, really, because it, you know, it certainly didn't help clarify. It just kind of added to the... It sort of enhanced the, this fragmentary nature of the place. So, yeah, I, I found myself sort of going back to Chatterton's house on the walk quite a lot. That was the one that sort of kept drawing me back. Um, I think I was quite attracted to the sort of eeriness of it. Felt a bit like the Blair Witch House or something like that. <laughs> I was interested in the kinds of cultural activities that were already happening in this part of Bristol, Port, Portwall and Redcliffe. But I was also interested in the, his, the kind of radical literary history of, of the area, a kind of radical literary practice of the poet Thomas Chatterton, who was born a hundred yards away from where we're sitting with ideas of literature as a kind of site for radical thought. I wanted to open up the process to other people, to find ways to bring in other writers, to bring in a composer, um, to explore this idea of what a kind of radical literary practice might be now. I devised a series of writing workshops which would be free, uh, which were advertised um, widely, um, which attracted about 20 or so writers. We worked at Bristol Record Office with, uh, with the archives there. And what was surprising about the writing that started to emerge through the workshop process was that it retained this kind of uh, uh, jagged experimental edge, but also that characters started recurring from one story to another across the centuries. So, so the story of a medieval stonemason mourning his daughter, and the story of a street drinker in the Quaker burial ground, or an office worker's lunch hour reverie, uh, all shared the same uh, cast of two characters, Jack and Bet, and always across the centuries they're just unified by the fact that they're experiencing or anticipating or somehow defined by this moment of loss. Uh, Tony invited us to take documents that he'd brought that all had a Bristol connection and to cut them up and fold them and realign them. I found that process really difficult to deal with at the beginning because as a writer you want to have control over the words you use and in fact I found I was having to write stories with, with found words and other people's phrases and syntax and um, I found it uncomfortable but in, in the end I produced a story that I'm really proud of. The richness of the stories, the, the diversity of them is something that I find very appealing and people have latched into different aspects and elements and to some degree the more mundane the place that you're actually stood in while you're listening to this rich layering and tapestry of, of, of narrative it just animates it, makes, well certainly makes me very conscious of the layers and layers of history that we're standing on. The star-shaped pavement lays across and the outer circles turn mauve. These things form the remainder of the chancel floor. This scene from the perspective of the whole and stretching simultaneously forward and backwards and upwards in time steps, a ramp. When I started looking at the area, I was immediately struck by these two defining landmarks. Uh, St Mary Redcliffe Church, this amazing Gothic church, 
and on the other side of the road, a little cottage, which is the house where Thomas Chatterton was born. And I was looking for a way to bring these two things together. And it occurred to me that a way of doing this would be to bring the organ music out of the church. And I immediately thought of the composer Jamie Telford, who has a kind of pop background. Uh, he used to play Hammond organ for the jam. Uh, but he's also a classically trained composer. It was quite an open-ended brief. Tony wasn't initially sh absolutely sure what he required, but uh, we, he had a story-based project uh, which was uh, geographically located in the Portwall district, and we, I had to write a, an accompanying score. We weren't sure exactly how this was going to work at first, but there is a large organ at St Mary Redcliffe that's been there since the 19th century. It's a Harrison and Harrison organ, it's one of the finest examples in the country. And as a result, I ended up writing eight preludes. Now, the eight preludes are quite small, they're two minute long, and they're quite programmatic. And what I mean by programmatic is that they've got titles that suggest what the music may contain. Published alongside the sound work is a companion volume, a novella entitled Miss Sorts Volume 2 that I've written, which enabled me to explore these themes much more fully um, through the lives of four characters that travel through the Redcliffe area of Bristol and are also themselves defined by a moment of loss. But also looking at the map, we've discovered there's a number of things on the edges of our what we thought was the area. So it's important to scroll through the map as well. Yeah, I'm really excited. I want to go to the one that's on the bridge. Shall we head for the bridge? Yeah. I think go to the bridge, yeah. yeah. Okay. Bet took some steps forward, but then a soft breeze wandered through the various dates, making its own soft music as it whispered at each corner junction. The day was done, and with it, all things 19th century. This is 20th century work she thought. Farewell, Jack. I must be away, she said, then disappeared into the sky.